Good morning. Or afternoon, as the case may be. Good morning. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, it is uh, Tuesday, March 21st. This is the Technical Advisory Group on Observability, uh, part of the CNCF's uh, uh, twice monthly meeting on this, and this time on the third Tuesday. Um, uh, this is a CNCF um, sponsored event. As such, the code of conduct does apply. Um, I'm putting in the meeting notes here. Uh, or rather, the, the meeting notes link is in the chat. Please feel free to sign in. And if there's anything anyone would like to add to the agenda, we have somewhat of an open agenda today. Um, however, we do have uh, something uh, to start with, which is the Query Language Working Group Charter Finalization. Uh, and Chris is here. Um, if there's nothing else at the top of the hour that, that folks want to interject with, um, the floor is yours, Chris. All right. I think we made good progress. So, Chris, go for it. Good morning. Everybody good morning. Uh, you... Do you want to share it? Do you want me to? Are you able to share your screen if, or do you want to, or are you just going to talk? Yeah. I was just trying to find. I wasn't sure if I'd make you a co host or not. <laughs> see if it works. All right. Oh, um, uh, I'll also say that uh, I'm going to have to drop it about 20 past. I unfortunately have a conflict this week. Um, uh, feel free to use the the time. It, it's it's yours for 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 what you like. If someone could uh, describe, um, uh, uh, that would be awesome. Matt, I'm there. I'm there, so no worries. Oh, I, okay, yeah. So you're not okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think our meeting got moved. That's right. If I share for some reason, I can't talk through the talk. That's odd. You can share. Do you want me to, Chris? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Yes. I can do that. It's. Uh, do you want me to share the query, uh, the query language talk? Yeah, the charter yeah. there, please. All right. Let me find it. Here it is. Okay. Gonna share. All right, and uh, just for folks who are coming to the working group new or the charter or haven't seen it before, the goal was that um, some of us wanted to do some research and look around at different query languages that are available for observability data and then see if there are any commonalities between them and figure out which might be the best to implement for various tools. Um, and then it kind of grew into looking at a unified query language that would be applicable across a wide range of observability telemetry data types, and then hopefully generate some kind of standard or recommendations for a standard um, that various companies or tools could implement to make it easier to work with observability data and 
migrate between tools, migrate between vendors, um, and build a, a common knowledge base that is applicable for engineers and folks who go across companies too um, and faced with new tools. Mm -hmm. So the idea, um, one of the ideas initially was to try to launch it under an open telemetry group, but that is solely focused on instrumentation and data collection. So it doesn't really fit there. And so we, um, there were talks behind the scenes and decided to start it under the tag observability group. So here we are today. Um, so some of the goals that we've come up with um, for this group, um, if you don't mind scrolling down a little bit, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, thank you. Um, sure. Is that we want to do some research first because it's really important to analyze existing query languages and user um, complaints or the bits that they're happy with and also figure out where we've come in the past, what has been tried out in the past, what worked and what didn't. So we want to start by looking at all the common or uncommon or desired query use cases that various users have, end users have, regarding observability data. So we want to collect that information. Um, we want to then start look at and analyze all the input and output data models for the existing DSLs, some of the popular ones at least, then try to figure out what the design goals are around those query languages, what some of the caveats are. And in particular, I'd like to uh, capture implicit or assumptions, uh, implicit behaviors or assumptions around existing languages that aren't necessarily obvious to end users. Um, document the semantic details for various operations in those languages um, and then kind of survey uh, the adoption and tooling and infrastructure that's built around those DSLs um, because we do want to look at what's popular, what is being used, what, and then also what isn't. And then also we'd like to interview some of the creators of the DSLs too to see what they're thoughts were, what they ran into designing a language and uh, what their general experience was. Um, so the outputs of this working group are going to be a document um, kind of describing what the goals of a standard language should look like or the recommendation should look like. Um, and we wanna make sure to call out the benefits of that, but also the trade-offs um, and issues that would be incorporated in that. Um, we want to create a database, and yeah, some of this is <laughs> a lot of typos, so thank you for helping <laughs> me on that. Um, we want to be able to document and create kind of a database of all the analysis that we've done, all of the use cases that we've collected and whatnot, um, so that we can then go through and create a document of what the recommendations are for the observability uh, standard. Uh, query language and be able to tie it back to what was done previously and what worked well in the past. Then we also want to create a schema. Uh, folks have requested that, a schema and some APIs for the output that would be common so that a tool could implement this API and schema the model and then users could write tooling against that and be able to migrate and point that tooling against different sources without having to, you know, parse something that's in a format for this DSL versus that DSL, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, we'd like to try to recommend a query syntax. Mm -hmm. um, so all of this will be, the deliverables will pretty much be a Git-based uh, repo under the tag repo that will mm -hmm. capture mm -hmm. all this data and then we'll share it more widely. Should so, we just uh, state that someplace uh, that this work will be available in a, a GitHub uh, working group repo? Yeah, I have a line somewhere in there about that. Okay, okay, sounds good. But yeah, we could bring it up there. Yeah, any thoughts on the overall goals? Are we missing anything uh, in terms of, I think, I mean, I think this is pretty good. Um, I know we discussed use cases earlier up top, but um, just wondering if that will just get factored in from the benefits and trade-offs. I mean, do we need to, or should we provide appendices for the 
takeaways from the interviews or any other detail from the research? I think part of all that research, it will be captured in the database there. And then okay. what I was thinking is to, it's part of the use cases, um, and I have an example I can share after this, um, is to document example queries in each of the current DSLs. And then that would then, when we're choosing the um, final recommendations, we can link back, cross link back to those examples and explanations too, as to why the decision was made. Yeah, I, I was gonna say um, kudos and congrats on this. Um, uh, to, to, to me, it reads as, I, I don't wanna date myself, but a more classical engineering requirements doc that's specific. <laughs> Um, and scoped and bounded and um, doable as a result, right? It can then be apportioned off, right? And we can be very specific. Um, in, in particular, since this is around query languages, um, uh, I think having those examples is paramount because anyone reading it, if they're not already familiar, is going to need some concrete example with which to build some kind of mental model, right? So they can assess the different ways of querying. Um, and and that, I think that's consistent with know everything from the aho book all the way through you know the, the compiler stuff in general so so i think this is a great start i'm, I'm comfortable supporting this um i also like that it's time bounded uh and you you you've got some resourcing needs that are also scoped um this is something that we i think we can ask um at the toc level for and it's something they can say yes to i would think um cool thanks you know, I think a side benefit of really documenting all these languages and providing examples is that folks who are migrating between vendors right now um, would find a way like, oh, I have this query. How can I translate it? Yep, It'd be a nice resource that I think vendors would want to contribute to it, hopefully. Yep, yep. I, I had one thing that you might, as a suggestion, and, you know, again, it's on me for not being on the dock last week um i've been doing end of quarter stuff so um been a little slammed time wise but uh what one thing that comes to mind is we might want to call out also capturing the developer experience as a result like based on depending on what aspects of a query language you you, you ultimately decide to recommend or, or to, to, to standardize on there will be implications for what's possible for things like visualizing the query execution plan or debugging a query but, I, but I, matt isn't that implementation i mean my concern well, is it, that it's you implementation know, but um, i guess what i mean is if we're going to have you know nuggets of of, of different aspects of, of query languages and, and and what benefits they provide and why they might want to be chosen over others uh part and parcel to that discussion i think would make sense to say and if we structure the query language like this then these sorts of things are possible for developer tooling for interactive sure. debugging and, and like using and understanding query results um you know because these queries are obviously going to get kind of complex on potentially right um and so th that would just be one more like column i might add to the matrix you know that you're building that is uh, the how how this uh, a particular um you're basically saying that, hey, you know, these are the ways that this could be used. Yeah, think of it like an optional column in a database, you know, uh, for like, you know, implications of this choice, positive or negative, or right? just things to take into consideration. Like we're building a matrix of all these different languages and their trade-offs. I think from a language perspective, some languages are more conducive to debugging and understanding than others, right? Like if you chose a Lisp kind of thing that's very, very complicated, right? right uh, you could maybe do great recursive queries and stuff, but like showing what's happening in a debugger might be a lot harder, right? Than something that's a little more unrolled at the language level. I guess that's all I mean. I, I don't want to take up too much time. I'm happy to do so in, in the doc instead, but um, just that no, developing that's... experience, I think, is an aspect that is worth capturing. Yeah, and somebody actually commented, a uh, fellow from Honeycomb, not terrible names, but uh, call that out specifically that we should account for that in uh, developing the recommendations, including things as simple as syntax highlighting, um, code completion tools and all of that, and making yeah. sure that the semantics yeah. account for that. Yeah, yeah like some, so languages, have... some languages you would struggle to make an LSP for a language server provider uh, plugin, you know, for, for either Eclipse or VS Code or whatever. Like, you know, some languages just aren't complete or are like Pascal, <laughs> I dare you. you. You know, there's ambiguity in the language itself, right? So, so that's all I mean, yeah, thanks.
I, I, but I think just going back to that point, um, Chris, I know that there were some comments around this back and forth, but just to be very clear, I think this should be a specification, uh, not so much diving into defining features and how they're going to be built, right? Because again, I think we can hint at the, and, and indicate the features at the highest level, but I, I do think that otherwise what will happen is that it's very easy for a group, uh, you know, all of us care about implementation most of the time. And it's very easy for us to kind of diverge into uh, <clears throat> highlighting, for example, that's an implementation detail. Uh, you know, it's not something that is Ooh. related to what a query specification would look like. Exactly. I would say like an implementation, I, that's, a, that's a good point. I guess I want to be, be clear to it. Um, um, you know, part of the recommendations might want to be uh, to what level of technical competency or what level of prior, you know, languages, query languages experience might we expect the average user of this to be at? Like, can we expect a fairly high or, or do we want to make it accessible to a broader swath of the cloud native ecosystem by making a simpler to understand language up, up front? Right. So like that's an example of a language trade off kind of like discussion that I wouldn't say is implementation but is more like functional, um, you know, like what's important in our composite matrix. And, and I guess what I was saying is I like that this is so laid out and specific because part of that specification can be, and the kind of the, the index we came up with, you know, by which to sort the various options into you know, what, what, what makes sense is this is how we're weighting those factors, right? So I guess that's the, that, that was my only, but I didn't mean to say obviously that we should nitpick about implementation or get ahead of ourselves here uh, but i do uh, th that's all i just but i do think that like the aspects of the language that are chosen and their implications are really design and feature decisions that are not implementation specific if that makes sense they're more of our requirements and mark and like an mrd like a market requirements you know like what's what's the addressable market share here if you will uh, for developers that, that might want to be able to be able to use and access this query language um you know, so that it can have broad adoption or and and all of that and that's that's why i think the debugger developer experience stuff matters but again um and now i've belabored it <laughs> so, so i'm going to no daniel has a good point and it is kind of part of this too part of the task is to when coming up with a recommendation what is going to be the target and what level do we want mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but and yeah we need to avoid um bike shedding and digging deep into implementation details, but we kind of need to account for some of those um, yeah. as to mm -hmm. you know, feeding the implementation or the recommendation. Yeah, cool. agreed. All right. Um, so I laid out kind of, we broke out the tasks and deliverables into a set of five. I can emerge some, cleaned it up a little bit. So starting off, we'd like to get a lot of folks to help compile the set of use case scenarios um, and that's just by going around the industry asking people what they're using looking at code and um, alerts and different plugins that may be making queries and see what um, is being used and we'd like to try to get um, the majority of that completed by the end of q2 um, this year if we and i think Something like this is nice because we can get a lot of people swarming on it and just contributing to a central repo. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then the next step would be, and it can happen concurrently with the um, use case is kind of surveying the DSLs out there and starting to collect the information about the implicit behaviors, the assumptions behind the languages and um, the operations and how they actually behave. Um, and we probably, this is going to be a more, a real deep dive into the individual query languages and a lot of documentation and a lot of discussions. Um, but it should be kind of fun. I think I like doing that kind of work. Um, and that can also happen in parallel. Folks can swarm on it pretty easily. And we try to have most of that data finished by Q3. Then the next step, number three, um, is it could go super fast because there might not be a lot of commonalities or it could take a little bit of work um, to go through the data set. 
but we can identify any commonalities between operations and the different DSLs. Um, something like filtering should be fairly common for something like uh, tag A has a value of tag B. I want to filter on that. Um, some things will be more tricky, kind of like different regex implementations of different languages, et cetera. Um, but there should be some commonalities that we could um, pull out of there. Um, and we'd like to try to have that done by the end of the year. Um, and then step four is going to be the biggest um, uh, bone of contention, I think, where we'll need a lot of discussion and a lot of documentation and back and forth around figuring out what recommendations we'd want to make around those operations that are not common between languages. Right. And then at the end of it, hopefully we'd have a good set of recommendations that we could then draft into a final um, set of documents that we can then pass on to another group that would be responsible for actually implementing the standard or creating it and launching any projects under the CNCF that would apply. So that's the task and deliverables at a high level. Any questions on that? So I think um, here, um, Chris, I know that we are in number four. We are calling out behavior from non-common operations uh, and in three common operations, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we also call out desired cases, use cases, which means that those could be new uh, areas mm. that are gaps mm. today? I mean, is that, should we call that out explicitly or? Um... Yeah, that's a good point. Sorry, I wanted to take a note and lock my computer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> I mean, again, just to be thorough, you know, because I think all the three um, call outs are good call outs. Okay, yeah. We can add that, definitely. Like, for example, I, I mean, you may have um, complex joins that may need to, you know, or specific types of joins that are um, accessory or accessor, you know, kind of functions. But on the other hand, they may be completely convenience functions, right? They may not be even common or uncommon, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Non-common, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like a... Other other questions? Uh, do folks have other questions or points? Uh, not so much a question, just an observation. I can't wait to see some of the results. Like, like if you look at SQL, right? Um, you know, you know what Postgres like nine, ten ish. You know, common table expressions were, were you know were added. So like you know, some number of years ago, the world kind of woke up and went, oh cool, we can use CTEs and we can like unmuck up some of these kind of more complicated queries. Um, you know, and so I, I love that we're taking a, a real languages look at the semantics of this intentionally. So. Um, Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Let's move on then. Yep. Then the rest of the doc is kind of a, a little more detail into individual, uh, those individual tasks, such as use cases here. We uh, started laying out some of the common ones that um, we all have likely experienced with observability systems, like uh, filtering, obviously, aggregating um, some of the data. Uh, extracting metrics from logs, traces, et cetera. Um, so this is not meant to be an exhaustive list, of course. It's just some of the examples to get folks to think about once we actually start the uh, collection process. Um, and then I did mention in there the, the um, if you could scroll down to the uncommon and desired uses there, um, I wanted to call out specifically kind of the power use cases because that's where I think us uh, as folks who've implemented <laughs> query languages in the past um, get a lot of feedback or criticism, <laughs> very few com compliments. 
around uh, the power users who want to <laughs> or need to do some complex analysis and they'd like to do it with the tools that we provide um, and sometimes we have to say oh no i sorry we don't support it here you can export this and maybe pull it into Trino or uh, Pandas or whatever other library you want to use to do your more complex stuff. And then they come back and say, oh, this stinks. I'm just going to spin up my own system and collect it here. <laughs> so um, it would be nice to support those use cases. And of course, if we're targeting kind of a minimum standard, we won't necessarily have recommendations for all of these. But I still think it's important to account for some of those um, when we craft the recommendations so that whoever implements it down the road will be able to create something that ties in nicely with the recommendation. Yeah, I think that would be very uh, valuable because um, again, I think uh, if we could even show the correlation between how some of these power user use cases actually are a you know translate into a fair bit of usage if you will of a query language um that would be actually super interesting as a as one of the observations mm -hmm. yeah. um and then of course another aspect is that we are targeting um new use cases where we're going to be joining data um from various sources like the whole I guess temple stack you recommended um, <laughs> all the traces, events, metrics, logs, performance uh, or profiling about uh, data, and there are cool a whole bunch of potential new use cases that we can um, support with a query language in theory. Though that's going to be a tough lift, of course, because the models are very different. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I think it's still worth attempting. I mean, again, I, I think uh, Chris is uh, the document, you know, you highlighted um, going after the primary uh, telemetry signals first and then going after, you know, the um, more power user usage, uh, you know, based signals, I think may be a good approach. Um, mm -hmm. but, but nonetheless, you know, from a completeness standpoint, it's good to explore all of the all of the different telemetry signals and as you said there might be quite a fair bit of divergence across you know based on the type of data in the um in the in the um you know uh, query functions if you will right language functions yep. but that's okay i mean that's the idea right yep Yeah, and then I just laid out some information about collecting the data um, mm -hmm. interviews. Then I had a call out here about context as well. Um, and I guess it's still kind of an open question for the working group um, as to how far we'd want to support different contexts of data, i.e. streaming data or online data use cases, which a lot of companies, including Netflix, Yahoo, um, and others still have streaming alerts so that we're taking the same query, applying against data in a database, maybe in memory or um, uh, available real time, applying the same query on streaming data, and then applying the same query again on historical batch data for years yeah. of information. So agreed, agreed. Because I think you know again, um, and and you know that's one of the things that I wanted to call out here because context is very important, right? Not only is it at rest uh, or streamed or batched, if you will, but also real time versus long term, right? Mm -hmm. And and uh, having those both those dimensions uh, factored in in context is super important because I think that if the you have functions defined or a particular syntax defined, should be able to address all those use cases if they're gen generic enough, right? If they're common enough. Right, yeah, I agree. Right, and then just a section on the output and I had a link to a repo um, with some PRs and YAML files, if folks wanna look at that, um, providing an example um, use case 
with uh, some examples in different query languages. Um, so we could build off that. The working group can decide if that's a good format or how to change it, et cetera. Um, and then for number two, uh, the survey and documentation of existing DSLs is pretty fairly straightforward, I hope. And that will target a number of common or popular query languages. We don't have to do an exhaustive uh, dive into them. The working group can finalize the initial ones that we want to target. And then even after the working group is finished, we can add more languages in the future or users who want to to the database. So of course, we do want to focus on things like PromQL, uh, LightStep to UQL, um, some Custo, the Grafana, LogQL, TraceQL, et cetera. Uh, Splunk, of course, with their um, language, and then try to pick some of the more popular SQL variants out there. And I think we those. missed uh, Elastic QL, EQL here, because mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a huge use case for uh, logs, especially. Yep. Okay, I'll add that, Lucene. Yep, Lucene. It is <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, good point. I'll add that in there. Um, so same thing, a little section on collecting the data uh, around this to interview um, the originators if possible. Otherwise, dig through documentation and source code um, whenever we can. Um, and then some information about the semantics and what's important to capture around the um, implementations of the query languages. Um, so for an example question is uh, for metrics data, uh, when you downsample or consolidate or bucket the time series data, you know, you collect an average over a time range of maybe a minute, you know, is the start time inclusive or exclusive? Is the end time inclusive, exclusive? Um, is the timestamp of that interval the start or the end of the interval, et cetera? So I think those are the kinds of semantic details we need to capture. Um, and then again, are there, the are there related conventions that we need to define here? Would that be part of this uh, section? Um, yeah, I think it will be, especially the related, uh, the data models that yeah. are being fed into these languages. Um, I want a quick question about the hotel group. We attended the end users meeting um, last week with, um, I forget the fellow now. Um, but yeah, they are aware of it at least. Um, and we're hoping to get more cross pollination from the hotel group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and several folks are super interested. So um, I'll definitely help Chris in uh, getting more folks, uh, you know, involved and also members of the TC who are interested. Cool. Oh, I can't hear you right now, or Tomish, if you're speaking. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can hear you. But, uh... Bartek, I think you're clipping if you're saying something. Yeah, I think maybe now should some something works. Maybe not. Video. <laughs> yeah, it's it's better. Anyway, so uh, generally, yeah, thank you for answering. And I, I'm just silent because you know everything that was said makes sense. Um, I I don't have anything to add. So so good work. You know there are other kind of languages, of course, that we could take a look. Like Victoria Metrics, MetricQL has sometimes good ideas. But generally, like making this as productive as possible, like minimum. A set of things to research and then going forward makes so much sense because again so many useful things you would like to see as soon as possible and it's already an enormous work so you know mm -hmm. making some MVPs early um, that would be my recommendation but generally amazing work and yeah I will also work with Otto on in Google side to to make sure we are contributing yeah thanks awesome great thank you um, so then just another call out about context as to when an analyzing languages, make sure to call out um, the, if it's on streaming or batch data, the different data types, et cetera. 
Um, and then the output again is going to be um, that Git repo adding data and documentation to that. That's open source and searchable for everybody. Awesome. Um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. <laughs> um, then three was pretty straightforward. Uh, just analyze the uh, data that we've collected and find out what operations have commonalities between the languages um, and see how those fit into the examples and then output that as a document as to these are commonalities we found in semantics. Um, then number four would be resolving those divergent operations. Again, um, this is going to be a lot of discussion and uh, Slack and documents so <laughs> going back and forth and discussing what we think should be used. And again, similar output um, as far as the common operators, uh, just documenting it and documenting the rationale behind the decisions. And then finally, step five, and I'll add the, um, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, missing operations that we need to incorporate in the language as a step five. Um, but for now, then step five would then be the um, final recommendation, um, which will again be part of the uh, set of documents and data in that Git repo where we want to first call out uh, in a document specifically what the rationale and the goals of the recommendations are, then the minimum set, the MV. Uh, minimum set of data models um, that languages support for input and analysis, then a set of semantic definitions for the minimum uh, common uh, operations that we think uh, standard language should support. Mm -hmm. And scroll on down a little more there. Um, then the query result model, um, some recommendations around APIs and Everybody does want a recommended syntax or a number of folks do, so we should try to target that. Um, I think that we should emphasize mostly the semantics, um, but we'll try to get the syntax in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a question around a, a plugin model here. So I have um, a question and, here, uh, Chris, on the syntax uh, recommendation. And uh, again, this goes back to how we publish it, right? I mean, what is the syntax? Um, what kind of you know schema format do we want to publish it in so that that's consumable, even for uh, you know a reference implementation or a testing framework if, or a compliance framework, if you will, right? So um, uh, any any suggestions there? Because uh, I mean, there are several standard ways of doing this, but using uh, a standard format for the schema to be published mm -hmm. is something we should at least discuss, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll add that as a call out. I don't have any opinions on it myself, but more language experts might have. So yeah, I can definitely do that. Um, and then just some open questions and uh, frequently asked questions too that I put in there um, or that we've collected through the comment process. Yeah, so that's pretty much the charter so far. Um, so does anyone else have some thoughts or comments, constructive criticisms? <laughs> I think it's a very good doc uh, to begin with. So thank you, Chris and uh, Vijay, for putting this together. And I think thank you to everyone who's offered comments as well as you know walk through the reviews. Um, the only other part that I'd like to recommend that we consider is that um, just you know making sure that in the work group repo that we set up, uh, we have uh, you know uh, we maintain issues you know regularly triaged in terms of folks not only providing feedback but also maybe adding a couple of templates in terms of whether it's a you know feature request kind of consideration or just a um you know uh, other types right that is fixes or whatever else as we grow but um it really helped us you know as when we have done work groups before uh, to have a you know clear clear process for being able to provide feedback and 
comments. Uh, because once we have markdown, then you know folks can actually provide comments on the docs and on the proceedings there too, right? So the repo will also become kind of an area where uh, we could have a fair bit of discussion on the issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. We can set that up. Yeah, I think some a lot of the initial meetings uh, for the work group would be around getting those processes set up. Yes, exactly. And I, I mean, the reason I say that is because when we have the discussion with the TOC, again, it would be good to say, hey, you know, this is how we are maintaining it, right? I mean, maintaining that um, dialogue and making sure things are transparent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And everything should be done through the repo. And yeah. Not just yeah. back channels. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of the things that uh, would help in the uh, coming weeks is uh, uh, we have some of the common operations that uh, we want to go after. Uh, and on the on the pull request that uh, Chris has, he has outlined a few examples on uh, some commonly used operations. Like if we can agree in plain English, these are uh, the kinds of queries that we intend to ask a system. And verbatim, if we translate it to all the uh, various uh, languages that we are going after. Uh, I think uh, that will uh, help uh, when we look at which language uh, tackles each one uh, elegantly and things like that. So at least the def definition of what queries uh, we are interested uh, to see materialized in all these languages, I think uh, it, it would be greatly beneficial uh, before we start talking to each of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, language owners or end users. That's a Agreed. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, um, again, so I'm just kind of trying to take an example and work through it. Uh, so say you had uh, sum as in, you know, definition that of a uh, specific function. Uh, would you have an issue that is related to that in GitHub or would it just be a definition in a markdown file? Uh, I definition in a markdown saying that, okay, uh, tell me how do I sum CPU across two parts uh, yeah. very simply put it uh, so everything right uh, right down from the part name or what like it's standardized in plain english and then we realize when when each person adds a new languages uh, specification they realize it exactly to what the, the english definition basically tells it so that way like we have a standard which everyone tries to adopt and for some cases it might be oh this query language is not able to do this uh, so at least we will document all those things in a uniform way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to open that PR, we could share in your and share there. We could look at the example I gave. Cool. Which one? Oh, sorry. Uh, Is there a link? Yeah, it's linked under I think number one, uh, section up, one. Up there. Uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, I just pasted it in the Zoom chat. Right. Yeah, there it is. Um, the example get PR under the output above number okay, two. Yeah, got it. Can you see my screen still? Yep. Okay, cool. And then there is a yes, it's slash comment and slash single type towards the very bottom. On the on the left side, you can click on the. There, Vijay. This one, uh, use cases. This one, right? Uh, yep. Uh, top of that, yeah, and then select group I would be a good one down there. Select uh, group I, yeah. Yeah, and so that can kind of be an example. So that's why I was thinking. Um, just initially, I picked a YAML file because we can set um, variables and have kind of a nice schema, but then it can also support markdown in there. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea was you kind of take one of the use cases, describe it up there, describe the inputs, which in this case is just metrics, um, describe some of the uses, the outputs kind of like an alert or a visualization and how it's useful. Um, and then I might rework this a little bit, but an example description and then some of the different languages and um, call outs there. Mm -hmm. Cool. All 
and yeah, this is all open for debate and comment. And <laughs> if somebody else has a better idea or a, there's a better standard for analyzing this kind of work, I'll be happy to adopt it. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some additions <laughs> about that. That's totally okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Questions, comments? I know we're a um, minute or two over. So then next is the talk meeting right after this, TOC, and then... Yes. So the next step really is, you know, again, uh, setting a uh, setting up a time with the next at uh, the next TOC to uh, discuss the work group uh, and any questions, address any questions that the TOC members may have. Uh, I think uh, Chris over here, you guys have already opened up an issue on the TOC, uh, or we can do that. You know. Yeah. Not yet. No. Okay. So we can draft up and then open up an issue with the documentation and then figure out, you know, when, which session they're, they can review this so that we can get our work group approved and set up sooner than okay. later. Great. So I will stop sharing, but um, again, thank you everyone. And uh, Bartek, did we answer your questions? I know you sort of had some questions in the chat yeah that's exactly what that was about open telemetry kind of synchronization um yeah so all good okay okay awesome awesome um and again really appreciate everyone's you know uh, discussion as well as participation here again super excited about what we can accomplish together and um really doing some great work here so Thanks, Chris and Vijay, for leading this. And again, looking forward to any discussions we have. But the next step, let's work towards, you know, getting a talk issue going, getting the approvals done, and then, of course, having our technical discussions, you know, and continuing with them. Uh, again, feel free to, you know, use these tag meetings for those discussions in the meantime. And then once we have the work group set up, then we can have a specific time for the work group meetings, which will, you know, be our technical deep dives and, and stuff. Yep. Great. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely uh, rest of the day and uh, chat later. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.